The corner in this lesson cannot be turned while flat out, making speed control with your throttle important. If the car is going wide, let off of the throttle stop sliding outward, and then give it more gas again. If you maintain the angle of your steering constant when you do this, you will really be able to feel the effect that throttle operation has on the movement of the car. Drive the car so that you do not drive off the track surface. Speed control in corners, three. Try turning into a corner by controlling your speed with the throttle. If the car starts to go wide towards the outside of the corner, make sure to give it less gas to reduce your speed so that you do not end up driving off the track. Remember again to decelerate if you don't think you can turn and make sure you control your speed by just letting off of the throttle. Continuing from lesson 11, learn to control your speed with the throttle. In a corner where the angle becomes tighter in the latter half, the car is more susceptible to driving off the track at its exit. Once you are in the corner, ease off of the throttle before you come up on the exit. Once the car is directly facing the exit, apply more throttle to exit the corner. The key is to ease off your throttle before the corner becomes tighter. Here again, remember to decelerate if you don't think you'll make the turn.
Practice completing your deceleration before entering a corner. If you go too fast into a corner, the car will not make the turn and run off of the track. To avoid this, you must reduce your speed before entering the corner. The key is to reduce enough speed so that you can go into the corner with your foot off the brakes. Continuing from lesson 13, practice completing your braking in the straight section before a turn. Here, the marker boards on the side of the track will serve as your guide to start braking. Always remember the distance at which you started braking in your last run. Race circuits often have many features such as curbstones, guardrails, signs and so on that you can use as markers for your driving. Actively utilize these features to your advantage.
Practice decelerating rapidly from high speed as you approach a corner. The basics are still the same. Use the marker boards as your guide to gauge your braking and complete your deceleration in the straight section before entering the corner. An important point to remember here is to apply brakes firmly on your first application and to never let off and reapply brakes again because you applied the brakes too soft or too early at the start. If you end up reapplying the brakes after letting off, your stopping distance will become longer, leading to losses in lap time. Always remember to apply brakes firmly all at once. This is another practice to finish all your braking in the straight before a turn. When you consider the gripping ability of the tyres, it is best to apply the brakes while the car is travelling in a straight line. To use your brakes effectively, finish reducing your speed before entering a corner. Use curbstones and guardrails as your marker to time your braking when you drive.
A car that is turning is affected by centrifugal force, a force that tries to push the car outwards towards the outside of the turn. When speed is constant, the strength of the centrifugal force is determined by the radius of the turn that the car is making. This also means that as the car's turning radius becomes bigger, there is less effect from centrifugal force on the car. Imagine going around a corner at the largest radius or arc possible you would enter the corner on the outer side of the track and you would be at the innermost side at the centre of the corner. Then you would go through the outer side of the track again at its exit. This is the out-in-out -out manoeuvre. Now let's try actually driving out-in-out -out through a corner. Continuing from lesson 17, try driving through a corner in an out-in-out -out line. Drive on the outer side of the track at the corner exit. 
going to the inner side of the track, then pass through the outer side of the track on the way out of the corner. The key to driving smoothly is to use the full width of the track. Try driving through consecutive corners in an out-in-out -out line. The basics are the same, where you drive on the outer side of the track at the corner entry, going towards the inside of the track as you turn in, then going wide to the outside as you make your exit. Try connecting two consecutive corners in a smooth out-in-out -out line.
Try driving an S-curve where you drive through consecutive left-hand and right-hand corners one after another. In a loose S-curve with mild turns, it is effective to drive in a straight line that connects the peaks of the curves. Avoid turning the steering wheel as much as possible and connect the peaks of the curves so that you can drive through in a straight line. In an S-curve, you need to turn the steering the other direction at one point, and the timing of the steering operation is very important. Make sure you turn the steering in a timely manner so that you can smoothly connect the peaks of the corners. A tight 180 degree turn is called a hairpin due to its shape. Here you will practice actually driving this type of turn. In a hairpin you must watch your timing for getting on the throttle. Hitting the throttle too early or suddenly may make your car go wide or disrupt its orientation. Decelerate adequately before entering and once you are in, Hold off from accelerating again until the car is pointed towards the corner exit. <laughs> 